Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. A wonderful time to reflect on the joy of the resurrection of our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid, the angel tells the women, that first Easter morning, for Jesus has been raised, just as he had said. That's what this day is all about. The angel's message to those women that first morning is God's message to us today. Do not be afraid, for Jesus has been raised from the dead. Easter means many things. It is a message that cannot just be contained with one meaning. It's a miracle that is too big to contain one thing. First, it also means that Christ is risen, and that is important. It also means Jesus has defeated death, because death indeed is fearful to every human being. Easter means that eternal life is real. Indeed, we shall have eternal life, because Christ is our firstborn in that aspect, and that death does not end our life here. Easter also means that those who live and believe in him will have eternal life. So the first Easter morning, when the women made their way to the tomb, they had one question disturbing their minds. Who will roll away the stone for us? It was a very large stone, large enough that it needed strong people to move away. And therefore, it bothered these women as they were going to the tomb. They wanted to anoint their Savior's body. They, their last act of love towards the one that had loved them most. The stone is that story of the stone being rolled away is in all the three, the four Gospels, which tells us that it's a very significant part of the resurrection story. It tells us something else about Easter that is quite significant. That, that, that Easter is about the ways in which God removes obstacles in our own lives. The obstacles that try to keep us from God and try to stop us from living the life that God has called us to. Today, I invite you to think about the large stone in your own life, the obstacles that are keeping you from living the full abundant life with Christ here and now. Think about those challenges that are trying to keep you in your tombs, so to speak. This, those battles that paralyze us with fear, that trap us, that try to stop us from living, really living our lives in Christ. And then think about what Easter teaches us about how God plans to remove those obstacles. As we have said on the first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary had every reason to be afraid. A man they admired and loved so much, whom they had hoped was their long-awaited Messiah, was dead. And he had died the most crucial, cruel, awful way imaginable. He had been crucified. What did this mean, this death of their loved one mean? What will come next after them, now that their Messiah is gone? Would the Roman authorities begin to execute them and all his followers? The apostles were so afraid that they had locked themselves away in the upper room. But not these women. These women approached the tomb with the fear, yes, but they were courageous. Now, if we continue to put ourselves in their shoes, imagining what it would be like when they arrived at the tomb, it was spectacular. An earthquake, angel of the Lord descending from heaven, 
appearing like lightning, and the guards were shaking like dead people. No wonder the angel began by telling the women to be afraid, not to be afraid, but to think their fears will be arrested so quickly. Of course, the angel noticed that it's a place where, as human beings, they will be fearful. So he tells them, do not be afraid. How will they change from that fear unless something happens that is miraculous? No longer afraid of the guards now because of what they have seen. No longer afraid of the Roman authorities now because of what they have seen. But they become afraid of God's awesome power. The women were now filled with a holy fear, the fear of the Lord. Living with fear and moving away with great joy, as the angel had told them, they were told that the women quickly left the tomb with fear and great joy. The fear, in other words, was not erased, but it was transformed. Now they fear go with the joy mixed with the joy. You can just imagine that excitement, but again, the awesome presence of God which then brings in a fear that is not fear to lament, but a fear which is somehow hopeful. So we are called upon to embrace this kind of fear of God. It's not fear of crucifixion, but fear of resurrection. It is rooted not in despair, but it's rooted in faith. In other words, a fear that has passed through the very worst that life can throw at us. It is now a fear that is mixed with joy that nothing in life can take from us. So the resurrection of our Lord Jesus fills us both with, the whole, with, the, with the fear and heavenly joy. That joy that nothing in life can take away because it's joy based on wonderful Easter, activity that has happened. Our Lord is risen. He has defeated death, which is the last enemy. Paul tells us, where is your sting or death? We are more than one conquerors, and he praises God because of that. Indeed, without this event of the resurrection of our Lord, all that we have believed will be in vain. But praise be to God, it is now possible that we are conquerors. And therefore I invite you, as you celebrate this year's Easter, celebrate it with that faith and trust in a Savior that has conquered death, and let that fill you with joy. And as you go and say, He is risen, He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.